live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering Red Hat Summit 2019. Brought to you by Red Hat. Well, welcome back to our continued live coverage here at Red Hat Summit 2019. You are watching theCUBE. I'm John Walls along with Stu Miniman. Nice to have you here with us as we uh, head toward the home stretch, day three of our three days of coverage here on theCUBE. We're now joined uh, by a couple of guys who, they put on their traveling shoes uh, to get here, uh, both hailing from Sydney, Australia. Uh, Guillaume Poulet Matisse, who is a senior innovation lead at Optus, and uh, Vasily Chikolkin, who's a principal software architect, also at Optus, which is the second largest mobile uh, phone service provider in Australia. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us. Well, thanks for having us. It's a thanks long for, way to come, right? Yeah. Yes, it is, but it's probably worth the trip. Excellent. Uh, well, you're both on the keynote stage this morning. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, for folks who might not be familiar with Optus, why don't you tell us a little bit about your footprint in Australia and what brings you here to talk about Red Hat and, and OpenShift? Well, as you mentioned, sir, Optus is a, a leading telco in Australia. Uh, we are lucky that we own our infrastructure, which makes it a fantastic place as uh, software engineers or infrastructure engineers to work in uh, as we can develop uh, new products and uh, uh, new solutions or innovate within this network. Um, our roles uh, for Vasily and I at Optus uh, is essentially to identify uh, new opportunities to innovate uh, within our network, so use our core assets to innovate, but not only just do this research and development, also execute on this. So we, we call this a bit of an applied innovation, uh, where an ID, we would work really hard in, uh, in taking it to, uh, to, to a real outcome. Leveraging our core assets. So we're having a lot of stories with customers about transformation, and telecommunications is one that's fascinating to look at because you know you, you work on software. You know when I think back to telecom, it was uh, you know fiber and towers and you know physical implementation, but you know software is such a large part of what's going on. Can you tell us some of the changes going on, and you know what's impacting your role in Adaptus? Uh it's, uh, it's impacting all telcos, actually, but uh, yes, all telcos are switching from this uh, old mindset of just fibers, just towers, and with uh, SDN movements and 5G coming, which is driving a lot of changes, uh, people start thinking about virtual network functions and how we can deploy in an edge, how we can help our customers and developers to collaborate on next features, how we can leverage all our technologies and a state we have. Uh, I think if you think of software defined network and the move to virtualization, you can now think of this, uh, and Australia is a big country, mm -hmm. uh, so you can now think of this entire infrastructure as being virtualized and could be made available for other use uh, as well. Uh, so it's really changing that sense that it's not closed anymore and it, it, it can open to new use cases. You know, you bring up just a point about the pure geography of Australia. Yeah. Huge country, 25 million people. You know, we, we would, we're jealous mm -hmm. <laughs> here in the States. You have 25 just, you know, in the Boston, New York area probably, yeah. I would think, somewhere around there. Um, but how is that factor in, just in terms of your operations in general, uh, in that you do have nine million subscribers spread out over so much geography um, and you're trying to deliver these state-of-the-art services. Uh, so, I could take this one. So, in, in terms of distance, there, there is an important impact. Particularly, oh, well, today we were talking about phone calls, uh, but it is essentially managing an infrastructure and in a, such a large country as its challenges, but it's something we're getting very good at uh, as we're pushing very hard to uh, be present in regional Australia. So you can think of this beautiful landscape uh, and 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 getting fiber there being a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the challenge is that, the, the, the luck that comes with this is that we get to operate a scaled network, uh, maybe not with the scale of subscribers that you have in, uh, in the US, mm -hmm. uh, but with the same challenges. So when it comes to innovation, uh, we get the opportunities to 
we, we find new opportunities. Mm -hmm. So in the keynote, there was a lot of resonance in the audience when you, uh, you know, talked about breaking the language barrier. Maybe you know, go in, share with our audience here just a, a, a tidbit as to what you were talking about and how that works uh, from a technology standpoint uh, and rollout. So uh, from technology point of view, uh, telephony stack is, it's complex thing. And if you want to integrate directly with telephony system, directly with phone call, it's a tough job, okay? I did it, it's tough. We did it, I'm never game. So, and as software developers, what we tend to do when we uh, get some complex things to solve, we abstract it away. And for us, it was obvious solution. We need to abstract away all this complex thing, all complex signaling, media handling, and provide very simple way of getting additional voice services within phone call. It had additional challenges like distance and we can't just handle audio in the cloud because we need to be close to the customer, otherwise it will be very, very bad quality of service. See, but, yeah. And yeah, and it opens uh, availability to innovate further. We can bring more services, not only voice translation and transcription, but just think about it. You, you've got your voice. We can help you, we can provide new, exciting services on plain old telco. Mm -hmm. So we had Translate today, and, but we were here to talk about the technology and also the culture change around um, if our network becomes more open and if we have these opportunities to leverage this network to, to try to build new products, um, and there are plenty of products that we're we also working on uh, that are based on, on this idea that uh, we can build products like people build apps to build an app, you need uh, a, a smartphone or you need this environment. Mm -hmm. We can expose the network in the same digital environment. Uh, and translation is very interesting because it's emotional. Uh, if you think of communication, uh, language can be a barrier. Mm -hmm. And the idea that we digitize the phone call and that we can then let um, build products or, uh, or engineer products that break barriers is very exciting. And so this is why we picked this specific use case for, for, for the, the keynote today. As, as you mentioned before, it has an emotional uh, feeling to it. But, but there was, if, if I got it right, and please correct me if I didn't, um, you were engaged in a real-time phone call, right? Yes. And, and then if we pretended that one of you spoke one language and one of you spoke another, there was an immediate translation from English to French, French to English, and the call was being transcribed in real time as well, yes. so it could be used in other medium, right? If I wanted to use it in you know, emails or other communications, text, whatever. Um, so you were stockpiling all this capability, right, in through the transcription, but doing real time voice translation. So the value we add here, um, so things like translation is something that Microsoft, uh, for example, does really well, and, and many cloud. Um, uh, uh, companies do really well. But the value we add is to move from um, having an ad hoc translation request. So, uh, can you translate this to Russian? To integrating this in, uh, in one of the most natural communication channels, which is person to person. Mm -hmm. uh, the phone call is a perfect place to start. Mm -hmm. uh, because and if there is one place where you're going to have a, 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 bar a language barrier, as phone calls are global, you can call anywhere in the world, uh, this is really a, 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 an exciting uh, environment. Oh, I thought so. I mean, that was Yeah, no, <laughs> it, it's fascinating. I mean, think kind of history of telecommunications. It's, well, you know, every country has their own, you know, system, but there needs to be that interconnection so that, you know, today I don't think about whether, you know, I'm calling across the street, across the country, or across the globe. It takes care of that, and boy, if I could then just plug into some of the available services um, and do translation, you know, right, you're, you're going to bring, bring the world a little bit closer. Uh, together. And the phone call is ubiquitous. You don't mm -hmm. sign up to a brand, so you do sign up to a telco, but this is, um, uh, regardless of your device, uh, you can establish a, a phone call uh, and use these services. I know some teenagers that like to have their conversations translated for me. <laughs> That'd be really helpful. <laughs> it's probably can build it as well. Can you do work on that? That'd be good. Um, I'll have to think about it. What about 5G? <laughs> and, and what is that doing for you, just from a pure technical standpoint, the opportunities that you see coming with that, I know 
the rollout's probably still a year or 24 months away from taking place. I don't know what the Australia rollout is compared to the US, but, but in, in terms of what that speed is going to do for you, uh, what kinds of possibilities do you think Vasily uh, exist? Um, I'm a software developer. I'm thinking of like from pure software development point of view, it gives perfect opportunity to be connect customers with developers on an edge on a on your network. Mm -hmm. And it's all about latencies and bandwidth and you can do fascinating thing on an edge of network. Uh, AI based things, real time, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality. 5G will enable it and will kick this development and improve speed of this stuff. And I'm looking forward to have all of this available, not only for me, as I'm working for Telco. I don't want it closed. We're opening network. We're mm -hmm. opening Telco to the whole world of wonderful software development. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. 5G is also, if you think of 5G, you got to think about momentum. Uh, mm -hmm. There is this momentum that we have now to improve our networks, and it's not entirely just 5G. We've got the network function virtualizations, we've got IoT, mm -hmm. and that momentum is very interesting because as we improve our network, it becomes more digital, and as Vasily mentioned, as it becomes more digital, it's more open and enables new opportunities for mm -hmm. enterprise customers or for startups to innovate uh, in this environment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my understanding from what you talked about in the keynote, this is built on OpenShift. You know, what's the importance, you know, why OpenShift, and what does that enable for your business and ultimately your customers? It, this is actually uh, something we, we're quite proud of. It, it, when we started this journey um, in, in, this, in the software engineering uh, space, uh, it's in cloud native, it's only natural to build uh, functions in containers. Uh, but there was, there was effectively that gap between uh, building new applications in the current state of a network that, that has a very different approach of operation. So Kubernetes was the right uh, tool for us, but when you uh, operate a, a carrier network, you need a strong support and you need, to, uh, you need to have very firm SLAs because you don't drop phone calls. This is very important mean right. of communication. And this is where we had a fantastic relationship with Red Hat uh, to find a way to operationalize uh, uh, this uh, deployment. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, Red Hat wasn't only like operating this thing. We worked hand to hand in the last few years. We helped a lot with designing system with like best practices. We learned a lot of each other, and it was a fantastic journey. Mm -hmm. I'm, we really enjoyed. Welcome to this. It's extremely professional team. Mm -hmm. And our, in, from a timing perspective, our, our journey came together uh, as, at the same time as Red Hat started seeing telcos as being where the next big thing or the next uh, something to very uh, mm -hmm. much start focusing on. So, so what's your next big thing? We're talking about 5G and uh, what that's going to open up and, and uh, we've read a lot about it here in the States. Um, but from your perspective, you know, what, what is that going to enable? What kind of services, um, because 4G is already you know, blowing everybody's mind in some respects, right? With the data capabilities there, uh, imaging, uh, transactions, those kinds of things. But 5G, in your thought. Like I think uh, previous innovation cycles, so you think 3G, 4G, always came, came in with a, a pre-baked pre um, benefit. Like, often speed. With 5G, it's a little, um, my opinion is, is a little bit different. Um, what's happening and what we're doing is, is an example of this. With NFV, uh, you have a new environment, an open environment, uh, where new things can happen. And so you, you're going to see this as a open versus closed. Mm -hmm. And what it means is that the next big thing is not necessarily uh, with 5G or NFV. The next big thing is what software developers will make of this environment. And that might be a startup, or it could be enterprise, it could right. be a new corporate. Right. And we are very much, very much um, 
open to start conversation with uh, anyone that uh, would like to, to make use of this. Who's got the next big thing? Who's got the next big thing, yeah. Right. Well, gentlemen, thank you uh, for making yeah. the long trip. I know not just to see us, mm -hmm. but we do appreciate your carving out some time for us. Good job this morning, and uh, good luck down the road. Thank you thank for having you. us. You bet. Thank you very much. Thank you. Back with more live from Boston. You're watching theCUBE, and you're watching coverage from Red Hat Summit 2019.